let's look at creating a personal dashboard. When you log into Dynamics, the dashboard should be the first screen you see. If not, you can navigate to it by clicking on the dashboard uh, section here in the sitemap. If you're using the sitemap located uh, typically at the top of your screen in the classic view, it's going to be there in a similar location as well. So on our first screen here, uh, you're going to notice that we have a dashboard selector that's going to allow us to navigate through current system views. You can see it labels them as system dashboards at the top, as well as a couple dashboards down here that I've actually created. You may not see any of those if you have not created any yet. So by default right now, we are set up to land at the customer service manager dashboard. We can change that once you've created additional dashboards as well, or choose another system view to be your default dashboard. So to get started with creating a new dashboard, we're going to start here by clicking new. We're going to create a new Dynamics 365 dashboard. And once this first box pops up, it's going to allow us to choose a layout. So how we want to start uh, doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be the final layout. We will have the ability to modify this once we get into creating the dashboard. So we'll just we'll start here with a three column multi-focus dashboard. And as this loads, you're going to notice that we've got five different areas where we can uh, select a component. So we'll start by naming this dashboard and I'm just going to name it Jesse's dashboard. And going into the very first component, here are our options. We've got a insert chart, insert list, insert relationship assistant, iframe, or a web resource. Most people are going to be using these spaces for inserting charts and lists, although you do have the option to add the relationship assistant. What that's going to do is it's, it's an interactive component that is going to make suggestions, such as activities or tasks that are due. So there's really not much to it. Once you add it to your dashboard, it's automatically going to do those things for you. An iframe is going to allow you to add a website. Maybe you have a website that you frequent. You're going to have the ability to add that to your chart and actually be interactive with that website. A web resource would be a situation where maybe you're going to display an image, for example, and there are other things you can do with that as well. But most typically you're going to see users adding charts and lists to their dashboards. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to insert a chart into the upper left here, and maybe we want to get an idea of what we've got out there for cases. So first thing you can do is choose your record type. So if we want to come down into our cases area, we want to just look at active cases that are, that are mine, and you can change this view. Everything is based on your views for your charts and your lists. So Right now I have the option to choose my active cases. I can look at all active cases. If I look at all active cases, now maybe I wanna see a chart that shows active cases by the agent, or you could change that to status, for example. There's a lot in progress, so maybe we wanna keep an eye on this. We'll add this to our dashboard. We have a wider area here in the middle, and you will have the ability within each of these, as, as I discussed earlier in the section where you have to choose a layout, you can modify that. So I could make this smaller and I could actually add another chart in here if I wanted to, but we'll go ahead and we'll insert a list here. So we're gonna come down and let's look at our activities. So I wanna see activities, maybe I wanna see just my activities here. So I'll leave that as it is. You have option for different views. We'll add that in. Third spot over here, let's add the relationship assistant. When you do that, there's nothing else to it. You simply click on it. It's going to populate once you save and close your dashboard. Down here on the left, uh, let's go ahead and insert an iframe. And here, maybe you have a site that you frequent quite a bit. Uh, 
looks like a, one of the suggestions here is the Stoner Software blog. So we'll go ahead and we'll insert that in there. Labeling purposes, Stoner Software blog. Maybe we want to add that so that we know exactly where we're going on our dashboard. Click OK. And then down here, let's add one more list. So we've already got activities at the top. Let's look at accounts. Active accounts, my active accounts. You can come in and choose whichever best fits your use for the dashboard. Maybe we want just my active accounts. And depending on how many accounts you have out there, that might get to be quite a big list if you were to look at all. So maybe you wanna just be focused on your active accounts. You're not gonna see uh, any data in the list views until you save and close this dashboard creator. So we'll go ahead, save it. Once it's saved, you just wanna make sure that did save. You can see it populated the name up there. Now we'll close it. it. Tells us that we were editing a dashboard. It's gonna refresh the screen here. And the dashboard that pops up is the dashboard that we just created. So now you can see we've got our active cases by status chart. We've got a list of activities that you can actually scroll up and down in, one through eight of 35, so we can flip through pages. Over here, a relationship assistant. There are a couple of activities that look like that are due today in this demo, so I have the ability to complete those or close them. And if you have multiple activities, it, it's, gonna, it's going to show whatever it feels that is, is a suggestion for you for the day to accomplish. So down here, if we scroll down through our dashboard, now we actually, this is where we insert our iframe. So we've got our website here. I can actually click into any of these. So if I was to click into this blog, it's going to, within this iframe component, it's going to actually allow me to navigate through this web page. So that's very cool. Over here, I've got my other list, so I can see what my active accounts look like right now, and I can flip through pages. By clicking into one of these, it would actually pull that account right up. Now, maybe this is the dashboard that I've decided I wanna land on every time I open customer engagement. So I can go ahead and set this as the default clear it or should I decide that I want to use one of my other ones then I can make that to default as well just to give you an idea of what the capabilities are here so if I go into my list I created this dashboard just to show four different lists I've got active cases activities accounts and opportunities and again I can actually drill down into those just by clicking on the actual record itself I created one with just charts so this is showing me different charts here, a few different views that I selected just to give you some perspective. And if I decided that I wanted to share one of these dashboards, maybe this is a dashboard that I feel uh, a coworker could really benefit from. You go ahead and click share dashboard. And now I have the ability to, by clicking add user or team, I can go through and maybe Alan Steiner would benefit from using this as well. So I can share that. So by simply clicking add, I have the ability then to grant them permissions to read, write, delete, append, assign, or share. So maybe I just want to give them, maybe I want to give Alan the read option here. Go ahead and click okay. As soon as this loads, that box is going to close out and Alan is going to have the ability then to choose this chart or choose this dashboard in his dropdown and it's gonna appear under my dashboards for him as well. Be sure to stay up to date by subscribing to the Stone Ridge software blog for all your dynamic needs. Have a great day.